Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome to another video. I know things have been a little crazy in the world lately. There's currently a stay-at-home order in effect. This is going to be my third week working from home. So to keep myself entertained, I've been doing a lot of arts and crafts. And I wanted to come on here and show you guys a very simple painting that you can do if you want to keep yourself entertained while you're at home. For me personally, it's much more relaxing to do abstract art than it is to do realistic art because sometimes when you're trying to be so precise, it can be a little more stressful. So we're going to be doing an abstract painting today. We're going to use watercolor to make egg shapes on the paper and then we're going to go back and doodle on them with a white gel pen. So we start off with the watercolor. I chose three colors that look good together and then a black. We take the water and wet an egg shape on the paper. It doesn't have to be perfect. Actually, the messier the better. I'm going to go back and kind of make them a little less egg looking <laughs> here. And then you just wet that area and you can drip in the different colors. Sometimes you can even just drip straight water to help it bleed a little bit. Here I'm just kind of outlining the sizes, but I want to make sure and let that one on the left dry because wherever there's water, the paint will bleed. You can see in that oval, I just dripped the colors in and I'm letting them bleed. Now in this one, I'm spreading the purple everywhere and then dripping plain water to help that purple bleed out to the edge. If you've got too much water, it looks like it might drip. You can dry your brush out and then use it to soak up that extra water. You can see how that pink oval was a little boring when it was just solid pink. So that's why I'm gonna add some black to that bottom edge. Although it looks like it's gonna dry as solid black, Really, it's going to mix in and create a darker pink and just kind of give some depth to that. So unless you're going for a pastel, very, very light color scheme, I would recommend adding black. There's a million different techniques you can use. There's no right or wrong way to do it. The only real goal I have is to try and make each oval look unique and not have two next to each other look the same. Unless that's the look you're going for, like I said, there's no right or wrong way. And I think that's the key to using art to relax and almost as a meditation is to just not be very precise with it and just have fun with it. If you plan on framing this or displaying it, I'd recommend having the ovals inset like an inch or two from the edge of the page. It just gives a little more finished professional look. Once you're done painting, you're going to want to let it completely dry. You can see how nice that black blended in and added some depth and it showed up a little bit in the zigzag areas around where the sections of water dried and gave it a really cool look. I ended up using just the white gel pen to do my doodling, but I also have some metallic markers, some black fine liners, and a gray fine liner. So you can use whatever it is you like, but since my colors were dark enough, I think the white showed up nice. For the second half of the painting, we're going to be doing the doodling. You're going to take whatever it is you're using and draw on each oval a different doodle. Of course, you can do whatever it is you want, whatever you used to doodle in your school notebooks or what you think would look nice. I'm just going to give you some tips on the ones that I chose. So in this first oval, I'm doing a tree ring design. And I actually think it looks nice if you start the center slightly up so that the bottom you have to do a couple rings that don't connect. I think it gives it a little nicer look than if it was perfectly in the center. Speaking of trying to be perfect, I tried to use this stencil to make the stars at first. And one, it didn't really work with that pen. But also I discovered along the way that doodles actually look nicer when they're not perfect. The next oval is actually one of my favorites. It's one of the more fun doodles to do. It looks more complicated than it is, and I'm sure there's a name for this style, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. You're gonna start off by making a pizza type shape and then connect them to make triangles, and you're just gonna keep making lines off the corners and creating more triangles. You're gonna wanna make sure they're all different sizes so it doesn't look perfect. And the only real tip I have is to connect as you go if you do too many lines without connecting the triangles you might lose which ones we're supposed to connect so it's very simple and it turns out really cool looking if you're a perfectionist and this part stresses you out that your doodle is going to ruin the whole thing i found a way to take some of the pressure off is to actually paint several different papers of all of these ovals that way you know if you mess up on one you have another chance so it just takes some of the pressure off and then you can really let loose and have fun with your doodles. 
Here I'm drawing a little plant. Of course, you don't always have to doodle. You can draw objects, flowers. You could even leave some blank if you like. Of course, it's completely up to you. I would say this oval is my second favorite. I'm drawing scales and it really reminds me of that rainbow fish book. I think it's because of the purple and blue. I really wanted to like add some glitter and it would completely be the rainbow fish. <laughs> Now going back to my plant theme, I'm going to draw a leaf in this top one and just keep it really simple. I do want to mention that I did a lot of these doodle pages and I did some just whatever I thought of, but I do want to say that this particular page is my favorite and I got a lot of the inspiration for these doodles off of Pinterest. So like I mentioned in all my other videos, when you're just learning how to do these things, there's absolutely nothing wrong with using a reference drawing and getting inspiration from other artists. But it is fun to just let loose and do your own doodles, which I did on several of the other ones, but I wanted to show you the best one and I do think this one turned out the nicest. In this next oval, I'm doing a sunflower and it's kind of helping you realize that I have a little bit of a hidden theme going here of nature. I've got fish scales, tree rings, some leaves, the night sky, it's all a little bit tied together but not too obvious and it's just kind of fun to get some inspiration and give yourself a theme. However, of course not every oval has to go with the theme, some are just doodles and this one I did some fun lines. I made sure they were squiggly and not perfect just to give that imperfect doodle style that I like. This next one was blue so it made me think of water so I'm doing some little ovals. They could be water bubbles or they could be barnacles on the bottom of a ship. Whatever they are I just made sure they were all kind of weird different shapes and the bottom left of them was thicker just to give them a unique cool look. I'm almost done, I only have one oval left, and since I have a lot of doodling going on, I'm gonna draw one more object, one thing from nature. So I'm gonna do some long grass with just little balls on the end. Again, it's not realistic, it's just kind of abstract art, going with the flow. I think that's the best thing to do when you're just trying to relax, is not to do photorealism or have to be perfect, to just have some fun with it. And there's a million different ways you can do this. It's very simple and relaxing. So if you want a good way to have fun while you're stuck at home, I think this is a good project that anyone can do. This is a really simple thing to do. Even a kid can do this. So if you want to display it, it looks great in a white picture frame, especially if you use the color scheme you're using in that room. It's a really nice thing to display. Well, I hope you guys liked this video. Let me know if you try it out. I'm going to try and come up with some other projects that anyone can do while we're stuck at home. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those videos. And if you need other ideas, you can check out some of my old ones.